You're still watching Ways Now. Punch is sort of old school, meaning it's not really soda, not really juice, not completely a cocktail. I don't know what it is till today, <laughs> but it's punch and we love it so much, especially on National Punch Day every September 20th. Today, break out your favorite uh, punch bowl and celebrate with different colored um, concussions. I'm not sure I ever took this. Mm. I didn't take it, especially when I was in university, because before I had gotten into the university, there was serious warning that don't go and drink the drink that you did not open. <laughs> if I don't go to parties, that because then it was believed that a lot of guys that were trying it's to get mix. girls would lace stuff. the punch mm -hmm. with different stuff. So the ladies now pass out. And in the morning, some things have gone down. <laughs> so I was so scared. I, did, I never attended one party. And I never drank. I've, till today, I don't think I've tasted the punch. I don't know what it tastes like. I have tasted I uh, haven't. the punch. And um, it depends on... If you know who makes it, then That's you're my okay. point. <laughs> I'm too suspicious. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. You, you will taste. There's no, no how you will not taste because yes, you are the mixologist. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, but the thing about her, it could be non-alcoholic and it could actually... It's not even about the No, alcohol. she's not it's sure. Not she's stuff. just the bias that... So you don't know what they mix it with and who been. has intentions yeah, that can so be. So most times the drinks are laced, you know. So you can't even tell who oh, no, to but trust. So but in a safe environment, in a safe environment there's, safe. I don't take it outside the environments that I'm not sure. You see, punch, you would not have an issue having part of it, would you? Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So you would you would look at the yeah, environment she needs to, before. But if you have that to, belief, is a it. limiting belief. So yes, you need to do yeah. for therapy. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Nobody You're <laughs> well, I haven't tasted it before. Don't worry. I'm not a fan of. I'm not a fan of a lot of all these fizzy drinks or soda or whatever. But this is so. not fizzy. I actually. know. I've said I'm not just a fan of mm. a lot of things. So if it's not my blended smoothie, understandable. Uh, so Mona Novex. I never taste them. I don't, don't intend to. Because, so uh, trust. <laughs> it's a serious matter. If it's laced with chocolate and coffee. Mm. <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, coconut. Let's start. <laughs> what did we find in the news? <laughs> All right, so uh, hmm. for me, it was this story about tax uh, fossil fuel companies feasting on profits as planet burns and power bills. So uh, this was a comment made by the UN chief uh, today, right? Mm -hmm. And um, the UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres was talking about companies being taxed heavily because they are the ones that contribute to the situation in the climate change and uh, how people are struggling with soaring energy and food bills. So he's asking that this be part of the, I don't know what, whether to call it corporate social responsibility of these big companies mm. since they're the ones that are benefiting from it, right? So he... He had mentioned that hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies and windfall profits um, are going to how uh, sorry that the energy giants feast mm. on hundreds of billions of dollars in subsidies and windfall profits while the household budgets continue to shrink and make the planet to burn. He had quite a bit to say. He even gave an analysis um, towards the end of his comment where he said that companies like Shell earned record profits of 11.5 billion US dollars and uh, ExxonMobil also broke even with an astonishing 17.9 billion dollars, nearly doubling what it made in the first quarter. Mm. So that it's important for them to pay attention to climate change because if you uh, have heard in the news as well areas like Puerto Rico some of the coastal lines are going through typhoons and um, uh, hurricanes and things like that that this is because of the activity on the environment which ultimately affects so they should look to put in some of these profits that they have received into helping some of these countries and some of these areas just places that have suffered uh different uh unfortunate crisis weather crisis and um, okay. land issues that's very yeah. commendable so, all right uh nj your story so, um my story is about uh, the famous uh evans 
who they call Evans the kidnapper. Mm. So um, just yesterday he was um, sentenced to 21 years imprisonment for kidnapping of um, a lady, one uh, Sylvanus half here. And he already has, um, you know, there were four counts. And this was, they, he, I think they were first arrayed in December 2017. And, you know, four counts, there's one count, he was sentenced to five years for, um, he was sentenced to 21 years for kidnapping and five years for unlawful possession of firearms. And, you know, a lot of Nigerians have been reacting to the news of this sentencing. Some people saying that it was too stiff of a punishment. Hmm. Stiff. Hmm? And some people saying that he, you know, actually that, is not stiff enough. Uh, when I saw the, when I saw the whatever, I think I was with, I can't remember who I was with yesterday, and the person was saying that I hope you know that this sentence was going to be, you know, this would, the number of years that he's been in custody would be, Added would be minus from, from this. So it's not technically twenty-one years. Yes. And besides, by the time he does three, four years, because he's, good because he's in Bologna, you know, he's still in billions and all of that. So he was telling me that it's possible that he might not even do up to this number of years. You understand? Which you're because very, again, you're we're, actually in, very we're in Nigeria. You know, it's just, well, I don't well, know. Even after the, outside the country, when you're, the number of days or years that you were, mm. you know, kept for would be added to Absolutely. your sentence. All right, so a man identified as Ibrahim Kole Towo, right, um, today had recounted how the Lagos State Traffic Management Authority officer, his name is uh, Mr. Bakari, he was identified as Mr. Bakari, stopped him, <laughs> can you imagine, from boarding a bus at Iyanowuru, Berger in Iyanowuru, that because he was looking like a Yahoo boy. In fact, I think they should just play the video. What do you do? What do you do? Mr. Bakari, what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? Why do you carry me for bus stop? I got a go I had a go job. I had a go job. I had I go job. I go I go I go I I I I I I I don't know what you do. That's why they catch you, boy. You boy. What did they do? What did they do? Why did they tell me to say it? What did they do? What did they do? Why did they do? Ah, my way, you know. Okay, last man, I'm going to Last man, I'm going to I'm going to implicate you. Last man, I'm going to I'm going to be the go-to. This one they tell me say as I dress, say I be a boy. I go call my brother now, they go stop. Show you the wine me. I can't make you the go job. What's up, you pay me watching? You pay me watching, come on. What do you do? You tell me say dress, come on, mommy. I got to go my work, let me get my work, we love you, shame. Make you the go job. I can't make you the go job. Make you the go job. I got to go my work. Let me get my work. We love you, What do you do? I got to go to the go to the I got to go to go to the go I got to go to the go to the go go to the go to go I go to the go go to the go to the go I the go to the go go to the go go to the go go to the go go to go go to the go go I don't dare say why arrest me. Why arrest me? What is he doing? I don't know. Come on for you. Leave me. Leave me. Don't cap me nonsense. Don't cap me nonsense. Don't cap me nonsense. Don't cap me. Don't cap me. I know they come out. No, 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 no. I know they come out. Ah, don't cap me. For my own. For my own. For my own community. For my own community. For my own community. What is he doing? For my own community. Look at it. What is he doing? So, so, so the story is he was trying. To, oh, okay. First of all, we have Uti with us. Welcome back. <laughs> you know, so the story in the video, I took it because of this conversation we we're having about around lawlessness. Mm -hmm. That he, the fact that he looked like a he was about to board a bus mm -hmm. at a bus stop. Mm -hmm. The last month official said he was not going to board that bus because he was looking like a Yahoo boy. And <laughs> Only in Nigeria. Videos. Only in Nigeria. Okay. So, uh, Uti, quickly. Welcome we'll first. We'll come back there. Hi, hi, yeah. hi, ladies. <laughs> Today's that day. Today's that day. Uh, my story? Quickly. Yeah. Um, so, uh, monumental. NDMEA, clap for them. 
Um, <laughs> the amount is staggering. So a 1.8 tons of cocaine um, has been seized in Ikorodu, mm. of all places. Uh, along with that were four men who they believe are drug kingpins. The, the seized cocaine is worth $278 million. Wow. which is about 104 billion naira. Hmm. I can't fathom it because it's just crazy. I mean, I was asking that, do we now produce cocaine in Nigeria? If not, the bigger question is, how did, how get, did they here? get in um, that amount? I mean, they say it's, it was the plan was for it to be sold to other countries. Um, and this is a, an investigation that started all the way back in 2018. Mm -hmm. So of course, this, this sounds like some sort of drug cartel. The questions are too many, and I don't want to believe like every time I think about drugs in Nigeria, I try to put my head in the sand and believe it's not true. But then we've seen hmm. um, fantastic uh, work. work that the NDLE has yeah. been doing, particularly since the former uh, um, administrator of Lagos State, former Maratu um, Kuba, in, in last year, I think it was January of last year. Mm -hmm. We've been seeing a lot of great strides. Um, but it's also scary when you hear him say that every one in every seven Nigerians um, has a drug problem. But also given the scope of problems we have in Nigeria, sometimes. People turn to drugs rather than mm. faith. Okay. Absolutely. I am very, very excited about this. I sent because we had, we had the, the head of um, media and communications for NDLA. He came on the show when they just yes, did this yes. at VGC, the Met um, Absolutely. Lab. Absolutely. So I'm, I'm definitely waiting for him to come, back. to come back again because this is a win. But like Uti said, I'm really worried. Like that much number of cocaine in this country. All right, we'll take a break. We want to talk lawlessness. Stay with us. We'll be right back.